Hey Code Creatives, welcome to another Code Creative video. I'm Greg Fine, and today we're gonna to talk about the prevent default method in JavaScript. Now, if you work with JavaScript events, you're gonna see prevent default being used out in the wild all the time. So it's really essential to learn what prevent default is and how you can use it in your code. So let's get going. First of all, let's talk about browser events in general. You see, most of the events that occur in the browser have default actions associated with them. Let me give you an example here. Here I am in VS Code, and I have some really, really basic boilerplate set up. I have my index.html file, and we're going to write all of our code today in this index.html file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a simple anchor tag, and let's say that we had a link where we wanted to take people to wikipedia.org. So for the href, we would put it in the URL for Wikipedia which would be wikipedia.org, and then we could give some text content to let the user know what they're clicking on. And now if I save and I go to my browser, there's our simple anchor tag. And if I click on it, notice what happens. Just as you would expect, and I'm sure as you already know, this takes us to wikipedia.org. But the thing is, in order for that action to happen, we didn't have to do anything beyond just simply setting up our anchor tag, right? Here's our code. We didn't explicitly create an event handler for this. The browser has a default action for anchor tags, and that's to take us to the link of the href. And there are other default actions that the browser takes for other event types. So as an example, if we had a checkbox, which we can do really quickly, we'll just do an input of type checkbox. We won't worry about the name and the ID attributes right now, but we'll go to the browser. And there's our checkbox. And if I click it and toggle it, we see that check mark toggle on and off, but we did nothing explicitly to set that up. That's the default behavior of the browser. Another example could be where we have an input field. And when the user types in that input field, text characters are being added to that field. Yet we didn't create that behavior ourselves. Probably the most common one is where we have a form submission, where the user clicks the submit button in a form, and that form takes us to the URL value of the action attribute. So in other words, that's simply the default behavior of the submit event on a form. Oh, snap! So sometimes we just want to say, no, no, no. We don't want the default action that you're going to give us, browser. We want to implement our own behavior or our own functionality when that event is fired. So let's see now how we can actually do that in our code using prevent default. And we're going to make this really simple to demonstrate. We're actually going to get rid of these elements in our HTML body. And for this example, we're just going to use some script tags within our HTML document itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen for an event on the window object, and that event is the context menu event. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up an event listener on the window object. So we do window.addEventListener, and this is going to allow us to register a listener, which is basically a callback function that's going to run when the context menu event type is fired. So that's the event type there, context menu. And then we'll do our listener callback function, right, with an arrow function like that. And now when we use add event listener like this, we automatically get access to the event object. So we can take the event object here, and we can call this whatever we like, but you'll often see the shorthand, which is just the letter E. And it's widely known that when you see the letter E, that represents the event object. And before we do anything, let's just log out that event object to see exactly what we're getting. So we're going to console.log e when the context menu event is fired. And the way that context menu event is fired is either by the right click of a mouse, or for example, I'm on a Mac so I can do control click, and that'll also fire the context menu event. Oops, and I did a boo boo here. I spelled context menu incorrectly, which you might have caught. So I need a T after the X, context menu. And now let's try it, and hopefully it'll work. I right click, and there we go. There's the event. And the event object is a pointer event object in this case. So let's go examine it and see if we can find that prevent default method. If you look at it here at this level, we don't see prevent default. But actually, if you go way down the prototype chain, we'll keep going down and down, further, a little bit further, and then finally here we come to the event interface, we see prevent default. And this is the method that we're going to use. So actually, before we prevent the default on the context menu event, let's spice things up a little bit. And let's put a couple elements on our body. 
and let's say right click for a spicy surprise. So what we're going to do is we're going to prevent that context menu from showing up when the user right clicks and instead we're going to surprise them with an image. So let's make a div and let's give it a class of container. This is going to be empty for now but this is what we're going to append our image to. Alright so this is what we have so far. Right click for a spicy surprise. And now what we're going to do in our event listener instead of console.logging the event object we're first going to call that prevent default method that we just saw on the event object. And something that you might forget to do sometimes is to actually invoke this function, which we're doing here with these parentheses. So preventing default should get rid of that context menu from actually showing up. And instead, let's first grab a hold of that container element. We'll say const container equals document.query selector. And then we'll get the class of container. And now after we call prevent default, Let's create an image element. So we'll say const img equals document dot create element. And we're going to create an image element. And then we'll point the image source to this image that I have here in my directory. It's just called girls.jpg. So let's put that in here in our quotes. Girls.jpg. And then we'll take that container div element and we'll say append child. IMG or image. So let's save this and let's go to the browser and see what happens. All right, right click for a spicy surprise. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. So I'm going to right click. Whoa, look at that. It's the Spice Girls, the one and only. And there's my favorite on the right, Baby Spice. So now if we hadn't used prevent default, let's just comment it out. And then we tried to right click again. Oh no, there's our context menu, and it's obscuring our view of the Spice Girls. And that's not a very good user experience, is it? So, as ridiculous as this example might be, hopefully it showed you what Prevent Default does. By using Prevent Default, we can stop the browser's default behavior, which is what we did here. And then we can do whatever we like, or we can substitute another behavior for the default one. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and subscribe to the channel, and also leave me a comment about how you use prevent default in your code. You'll also see in the description section down below, as well as in the comment section, a link to download my free Google Search Secrets for Developers cheat sheet. So go ahead, click on the link and get your free copy. See you next time.